This video is in hydrology. We're looking at an aquifer demonstration in the classroom using this plastic container to see the water moving down through different layers. In this case, gravel, sand, and some soil, and some topsoil, and how the water's gonna move and create the aquifer. And we can discuss various terms that we go through in the classroom, terms like infiltration, percolation, porosity, permeability, and different layers and hydraulic connectivity and how the water moves to create this aquifer. So to start this lab, the students can actually recognize the different three layers and actually draw out a diagram, kind of looking at the thickness of each of the layer of the top soil at the very top, the layer of sand, and the layer of gravel. In this case, we're looking at mini marble chips as that gravel kind of bedrock material. So you add in the water, add some blue dye to the water, some blue, blue food coloring, and looking at how the water is going to infiltrate the soil initially to simulate that on the surface of the earth. And it's not impervious, there is a level of porosity, and we know soil has an ability to move water through it, through the pores and the voids and the interparticle spaces, and how the water's gonna drip down with basically simulating meteoric water and how it's going to add in to the soil and become saturated. So another focus of this lab is to look at the secondary sublayer, which in this case is sand, a couple of centimeters between five to eight centimeters of sand, right below the topsoil and above the marble chips. Now looking at how the water is going to transport itself down, plus carrying the soil to a lower level, lower, a higher depth with gravity, and looking at how the water is going to be held by the sand at different quantities and how the sand is going to be moved down lower in between the marble chips. So there's different areas we can focus on with this lab to back up and underline different terms we cover in the class, in the lectures, and you can see it live in the demonstration. So I can keep adding water to this lab and trying to achieve some sort of saturation both in the visible marble chips at the bottom of the container, the also in the soil at the surface and also create saturation or a close to saturation level in the sand and how each layer is going to hold the water differently based on the physical and chemical characteristics. Now the soil is going to have different nutrients and different cations and anions which are going to hold the water which is there to basically create a area for vegetation, for organic material like roots to uptake the water and the nutrients through a cation exchange capacity. Then the sand is going to have a certain level of water capacity and hydraulic connectivity and obviously the marble chips have a high range and high level of porosity based on the inter particle or inter rock space then eventually if you add enough water over time you're going to have a point where all the three layers are saturated you can discuss the water table in different climates you can discuss the perched water table or a perched aquifer based on material. You can also discuss what an aquifer is, which is that available large amount of water stored in the ground, which is groundwater, but it's accessible through the surface and in large volumes. So you can see how the water is going to build up in certain areas and certain geology landscapes and certain rock types that would provide a good location to have or find an aquifer and how the water can sit on top of the soil showing that the soil is completely saturated and this would be a good point to talk about flooding and excess water excess saturation there's no more unsaturated zone or verdose zone in the layers it's just all saturated with water and you can see the different movements of the different layers and how they start to mix based on how the water is bringing down the materials down to lower levels and discuss obviously the fact that the water will not go away unless there is high levels of evaporation and you can clearly see a layer of stained water 
on the, the surface because the soil is saturated. So in conclusion, I use these experiments, these lab activities to enable the students to see firsthand what's happening with various processes and relate the words and terms that we discuss in the lectures, in the, in the notes section from the textbook or from the PowerPoint or from a video we watch or just from a discussion from the teacher and students and put those into practice and try to recreate real life situations with this hydrology experiment with infiltration and percolation, porosity, permeability, different rock layers, different sub layers and how the different layers act and have and behave under saturation and whether they become saturated or unsaturated and how to create aquifers and what environments are good to have aquifers, the right soil, the right landscape, the right climate, the right rock layer, the right porosity and permeability. So all these terms can be discussed using these experiments where the students are looking at these things firsthand and reacting, asking questions, critical thinking, discussions right there in the moment with the teacher and relating these terms, which is, I think is very, very important. And if you can't get out to the field outside and do field work or any kind of like field trips or really experience the outside, this is the next best thing.